Right, let's get this thing started. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the first edition of Study Sunday, where we're gonna look at different aspects of chess. Since I've started playing chess uh, lately in this channel, and I plan to do it uh, in a regular basis, this will be uh, most indeed something I have to do. I had studied chess for like two to three years, I think, uh, previously, and it's been quite a while since I don't really actually sit to study and uh, one of my most, uh, should we say, desirable aspects would be um, to study, to study, uh, to which I left most to be desired is studying openings, right? And uh, one particular opening, which I had quite a little bit of trouble recently, is the king's gambit right so um we're right here on leeches there are plenty there are hundreds of studies uh on the king's um gambit but this is the only one that i actually got to sit in one screen in which <laughs> had one uh it had a lot of appreciation from the leeches public in general uh, you can check it on wikipedia there's always the echo the encyclopedia of chess openings which you can most definitely check. Uh, if you hear some strange sounds, there's uh, quite a number of cars passing in my street right now. I don't know what the fuck is that all about, but anyhow, uh, we're gonna continue with the study. Uh, we're gonna start the study actually, uh, because it's something I had a lot of trouble dealing with, right? Either taking the gamut or declining the gamut. So, we're gonna look at each uh, and every single variation uh, at the very start of this opening, right? So, moves are e4, e5, uh, king's pawn opening, also, um, at least in Portuguese, they're known for being aberturas abertas, right? Open openings, right? In the case that you have the queen's diagonal and the bishop's diagonal available for uh, quick development. How the hell do I take that off? Here we go. Uh, right, so I have a little bit of trouble with King Pawn's opening because they're a little bit more dynamic and less strategical as uh, Queen's King Queen's Pawn's opening, right? which is my favorite choice at uh, this very moment. Right, so what characterizes the King's Gambit is the move F4. Right, you sacrifice one of the pawns in the King's side. Uh, so that you can better control the center, right? By taking the pawn uh, in a further white plane d4, you're gonna have control over all of these four uh, squares in the center, which is uh, white's idea right now. I don't know how to cancel all of these arrows, so <laughs> I'm so sorry if that bothers you. There's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. Nevertheless, right, the main opening, the main variation is e takes e4, right? so the king's gambit accepted. And I never forget uh, one of my uh, teacher's uh, most important advices from one of the books that we have studied is the most um, effective way, or rather the, the way you can most show to your opponent that uh, you refuse the gambit is by accepting it. Right? You refuse the advantage that is going to give your opponent, so you just take the extra material, right? The accepted variation is most definitely like one of the most common versions of the thing, right? So what to do in this particular position? Uh, black, uh, white will play d5. Oh, hang on, hang on. No. Takes d4. Takes f4, right? There's the decline variation here also leads to the same position. So let's see what is the position that it's talking right now. Uh, next move would be knight f3. Um, and with this in mind, black would play d5. I've played this move solely um, right after uh, f4. Uh, it seems like a good counterattack down in the center. And if white takes, queen takes. Uh, and you have uh, all these sorts of um, counter uh, attacks with the queen. Though a little bit more risky, uh, goes right down into my play style. But let's check on. 
So e takes e4, knight f3, and black respond with d5. Black aims to return again with pawn and concentrate on development, right? Uh, one of the opening principles that you need to have in mind is that you want to make as few mo pawn movements as possible. The pawn movements in this case, and the very opening, are to allow for you to develop your pieces uh, quite safely. The knights don't actually need to, <laughs> the pawns to move. Actually, the pawns movement actually make their life even harder. But it's to provide your pieces with good uh, sets of squares to wish to move to. So you don't want to make a lot of um, pawn movements at the beginning. Mostly two or three, right? Uh, of course, there are exceptions, and this is one of them. So, uh, black, again, frees the diagonal of the bishop, and uh, opens up the file for the queen, while also uh, dislocating, uh, dislocating the um, white pawn from the center, right? So, with that in mind, the usual would be e takes d5, and uh, supposedly, there's also another uh, variation right here, which is e5. Uh, I suppose this would be an inaccuracy, right? Since then, uh, black has the move of g5, and now the king's side attack is gonna come full form. Uh, possibly with uh, this pawn moving later on and all sorts of advances on the king's side. Right, so what to do with white in this position? This is the moment when I actually like to try and pause uh, the study and see if I can come up with a different movement. So if w black's gonna attack on the king's side, it would make sense for uh, white to be prepared on the queen's side. Uh, either uh, making the big castle, or trying to defend this position a little bit more. I would say, you now just to hamper this advance, to play h3, but then again, this is kind of violating the uh, opening principle of playing a lot of pawn moves, uh, as opposed to playing pizza's moves. So, what says the study d4 focus on the center right then that, that makes sense that makes sense to me <laughs> and then comes g4 advancing the pawn uh no comments about this that's um not a little bit insightful i have to say uh if there were more comments on this thing we could actually see if this was leading up to i don't know an attack on the king's side or a, a better position for black or white so this study could have a little bit of more comment on this particular position and if you're in the chat and you would like uh, to comment uh, please feel free to do so uh, it would actually help me a lot <laughs> since I'm, I'm learning this thing as I go along too but with this advance what I can say is that the black pawn here is already vulnerable and uh, though the position of the knight will have to hinder some developments. Uh, I would say you would go back here, because going back to the starting place would be catastrophic, uh, development-wise. It would block the view of the bishop. This knight can develop over here, and the fianchetto soon can happen. Uh, right, so I would say knight to d2, and what would be the plan? On black side, um, kind of hard to say at this uh, stage in the game, but definitely develop a few pieces because this is looking very grim for black as far as development goes. So either uh, Fianchetto the bishop or knight e2 would be my first uh, impressions. The pawns here are very vulnerable, though being defended right now uh, and this one not being attacked something would have to be done about this. So I would say bishop to g2, g7, sorry. And I 
suppose white's gonna follow up with the center um, consolidation. So possibly knight to c3 or even bishop to f to d3 in order to counteract some of the attack that's gonna come from the king side. Um, not sure, but the, the main reason I actually wanted to Thanks said that. A good sound idea too. Uh, the main reason I wanted to study this is because I don't know how to play it with black. Right? I'm not actually gonna attempt a lot of this with white, but rather I would like to provide a good response. So if this is an inaccuracy uh, in the part of white's um, movements, I would like to know why this is so such a good movement. Right? There must be a trap right here. Where we can take advantage of this. Let's go back to this um, later and try to focus with uh, the main lines here. So he takes d5 and uh, the follow up is knight f6. So the movement d5 does not come until the third movement, not uh, the second one, as I would do. <laughs> so d5 is um, the most desirable. Uh, response in the third movement. White takes uh, and black takes. The exchange here being that uh, black returns the gambit and concentrate on development. So material is equal at this particular moment. Uh, let's just see how it goes. From here white has five different lines. Right, the first one is bishop e2. So Protecting the king from many possible checks or anything related to that uh, and while also preparing the space to castle uh, would make uh, a lot of sense. This thing, they're not worrying about this particular pawn since their strategy has been counter-attacked <laughs> in the same uh, style and I suppose that Black's developments would be Bishop f5 maybe or even their own bishop to e2 and blaming uh, their own castles right uh, so with bishop to e2 uh, the following moves would be d4 d4 really huh oh yeah so the bishop's not gonna hamper any uh, development but at the same time, it does not consolidate the control of the center, and that's what, oh sorry, that's why boy is trying to do right now: to control the center and to occupy it. Um, since this pawn is being ignored, it gives extra control over these squares and prevents, for example, uh, bishop to e6, which would be uh, a good move for black, actually. So d4 makes sense. Next one is knight takes d5. Right. Uh, black supports f4. f4. Yeah, the pawn on f4 since d4 has unleashed the attack on the diagonal uh, of the bishop. That makes a lot of sense. Right. So the next one is instead of d4, bishop to c4. So not e2, acting a more um, enacting a more active role instead of just being here and taking control of the center again, protecting now the pawn, though it can easily be taken by this. Uh, I suppose there's a counterattack to it or something. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, traditionally, white's most popular move, which aims to give white majority of the king's side attacking chances. Right, so denying any uh, chances for g5 or anything like that as seen in the other variation now okay bishop c4 what would be black's response to bishop c4 i would say that uh taking another active role in the center with uh bishop to c5 would be good unless uh, if it wasn't for the attack on d4, so we can't uh, do that. Uh, there's the possibility of bishop to e6, uh, e7, 
or even to d6. Given support to the pawn, which can be attacked in the future, uh, since that was one of the lines in the previous variation. Now, what we want to do here, uh, uh, there's not a lot of responses to that. Uh, let's go uh, to the next one. Knight takes d5. Okay, taking back control of the center. And this pawn is probably gonna fall later on, because now the gambit has been accepted. And uh, accepted two times, actually. <laughs> then we're gonna have to deal with Queen getting early in the game. And that's it. So, next move, I suppose, would be either uh, Knight to c3 or Bishop takes Knight. And if Bishop takes Knight, uh, Queen takes Knight. Um, oh, which is right here, by the way. So, let's go back. Instead of Bishop to c4, we're gonna castle, right? Makes a lot of sense. And then knight takes d5. Uh, since after bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, what we struggle to demonstrate sufficient peace activity to compensate for conceding the bishop pair. Right, so uh, one of the most important things uh, to consider about um, pieces in general is that not only do they have their material um, worth value, but they play in a very specific setting. Uh, they play well in a very specific setting. So for example, the bishop pair allows you for more uh, overall control uh, of the board, while the knight pair, or a knight and a bishop, would be useful in a very closed opening. Since this is pawn, king's pawn, and uh, even the king's uh, gambit, actually, very dynamic opening, you want to conserve the bishop pair. Uh, that's something you want to have in mind. So, with the castle, after 6, uh, b takes d5, queen takes d5, while to struggle to demonstrate sufficient activity to compensate for conceding the bishop pair, that's not what they do. Um, with 6, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, bishop b6. Sorry? Hang on. <laughs> oh no, that's a different one. Right. Takes d5 or queen takes d5. If it's e6, bishop b3. Just to defend the bishop in case the knight moves away. Right? Let's say over there. Um, or making another attack. And uh, the next move would be c5. You control again, small center. And uh, open the square for the knight but not uh, hindering the advance of the pawn. Next uh, answer would be bishop b5 uh, check. Another option for black. So options considered here are bishop to c4, castles, uh, or bishop b5 check. In this case, I would suppose that having the isolated pawn here is not that actually uh, harmful for black. So this pawn's quite advanced and it's gonna lead a lot of defense unless uh, white's, uh, black's just gonna sacrifice it, which was the idea in the first place. So not a lot of uh, considerations had to be done there. Uh, my initial opinions would be advance uh, to c6 or cover up with a bishop in uh, d7. Uh, that would be my main guess as how they uh, black would protect against the check. Let's see what's the answer. Once you send disruption uh, the black queen side before black can get around to, uh, to taking on d5. Right. Uh, c6? Indeed. C6. Uh, d takes c6, obviously. Uh, knight takes c6, developing with a tempo, which is always nice. Uh, now comes d4. And now, of course, the threat here, although the knight defends it, is to push uh, d5. And with that, uh, the opportunity of taking the knight in this cure uh, to the king. Right, so with d4, bishop to d6 makes sense, since uh, you want to develop your pieces and get the king out of the skewer as fast as possible. Next one would be castles, castles, defense to d4. 
points here for. Taking control of the center, I suppose. This particular square, which was not controlled before. Um, that could be the case. A lot of pawn movement, movements being made. Although, uh, there's not a, uh, a lot of surprise there, given the chance, uh, given the fact that the Queen's Gambit is looking for center control. That's the main, uh, the main idea of the opening. So, of course, c4 would come as a desirable idea. And after c4, bishop g4, attacking on the king's side. Or at least trying to hamper the development of the white pieces on the king's side. Um, I don't suppose any advances on white's part uh, would be advisable. And in that sense, white should take measures to counteract this thing. I would suppose either taking the knight here to relieve the pressure on d5, d4, sorry, and uh, getting support to the knight after taking the knight. Takes, takes, uh, knight to d2, uh, giving support to the knight. Though that, um, kind of, you know, this guy is in a very awkward position with that movement. So, what else could we do? To develop our pieces. I would suppose takes, takes, and moves the queen over here, attacking the pawn, while also relieving the pressure on the knight. Maybe that's uh, something to have him. Uh, let's see what the book says, or what, uh, <laughs> what the study says. The rival and pawn majorities give both sides reasonable scope to play for a win. Uh, and unusually for the king's gambit, white will generally attack on the queen's side, uh, and black will attack on the king's side. They have the majority of pieces here. The castle is safer for the black king than for the white one, though the file of the rook is already opened. Uh, it's not actually that um, recommended to keep at, uh, to continue advancing here, since the position is compromised. Um, next one. So, um, sorry. So the, this finishes the variation. Attack on the queen side for the whites and attack on the king's side for the blacks. Um, I wouldn't go for that, because uh, I have very little uh, confidence on operating a king's side attack whenever I castle king's side. I don't know why, most of my attacks uh, have been completely <laughs> unsuccessful, um, and I fail to see how you can structure uh, uh, a king's side attack, maybe by going with the queen and uh, aiming at the king's side uh, with uh, the chain, queen bishop, uh, perhaps opening up here later on, but that's something that uh, escapes my rationale at the current moment. <laughs> so let's uh, not worry about so much the bishop to b5 check uh, variation, right? Uh, there's also the bishop, uh, sorry, the knight to c3 variation, which I have seen a lot while playing the king's gambit. White generally intends to bring the black queen out into the open with uh, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, uh, and there's a variation there, which is, go, if bishop c4, let's see, what chat? Bishop c4. What's the problem with bishop c4? Hmm. d5 directly, I suppose. Yeah, d4, indeed. Uh, giving a tempo to white, uh, that's not something we want to do right now. Uh, complete control. Yeah, that also counts. Complete control of the center, and uh, uh, the advantage of a tempo here would be quite decisive uh, in the opening for white. So you don't want to uh, put bishop to c5. We don't want to put bishop to c5. That's something we will have to memorize. <laughs> so, uh, knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. Uh, and there's a lot of variation here, I suppose. Uh, it would follow up with anything so interesting. Queen takes d5. Queen goes early in the game. Josh Waits King approves of this move. <laughs> so, the main problem for white uh, is now d4. Taking control of the center, again. 
so uh, annoying point that White is trying to make, uh, and I suppose right uh, the development of the bishops, I would think either bishop e6 or bishop e5 in the chance of getting a clean opportunity to castle. Uh, with that in mind, uh, the study suggests bishop to e7, uh, c4, again, supported by the bishop, um, and the queen is gonna have to retreat, I suppose. Queen e4 check. No, the queen does not retreat, it goes on the attack. Now that is interesting. Uh, putting more pressure on the d... Not, not more pressure, but attacking from a different mango, the d4 pawn. And at the same time, uh, keeping the development of the queen. I suppose bishop e2 would be the follow-up. Try to castle as fast as possible. And castles, castles. What would be the next move? Hmm. I wonder. Perhaps the fianchetto. That's possible. Oh, sorry. No, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, it's actually one of the variations. Hang on. So, e4, e7, e4. Castles, castles, and queen takes d4. What's the problem with the knight? Or is it just my... M I think it was my movement. I think it was my movement. Uh, it's not in the study, it was just a uh, <laughs> movement that I made. Right. Now, c4, defending the, d4, uh, the d5 pawn. Uh, as move 5. Sorry. God damn it. There we go. E4. E4. Defending the d5 pawn appears to lead to dynamically equal play and does a reasonable option for white. Black normally responds with c6. Yeah. Don't suppose there's any problem with that. So, in case of attack by the c pawn, d6 is a movement that could be that it could become useful right so c6 d4 oh, hang on this pawn isn't there oh no <laughs> there's another one <laughs> there's another one behind it <laughs> i thought what the pawn's already on d5, how's he gonna move to d4? Taking massive control of the center. And uh, at this point, I would just take. Yes, he takes d4. Uh, d5. And c5. Sacrificing another pawn. Knight to c6 would be my response to. Uh, bishop takes f4. Now taking back the sacrifice that uh, Black has proposed earlier in the game. Okay. In my view, White's much more comfortable in this position. Black cannot bring the bishop to the open diagonal here. Um, and though uh, they can do that with the light square bishop, the black square bishop is in, a, is in an awkward position right now. It's gonna only be able to move to e7 and uh, after castles there's not a lot that this dude's gonna do uh, too much right now after all of that uh, we're gonna take with knight on d5 right following up the main the main line after bishop e2 let's go to the beginning right e4 e5 f4, he takes f4, accepted variation, knight to f3, um, e5, 
e takes d5, knight f6, and now bishop d2, or any of the other variations here, bishop takes d5, now accepting the gamut, or taking back onto the gamut. c4 opens up an attack on the knight, and uh, e shove bishop e7. Uh, sorry, not bishop. Ninety-seven. Oh, e7, not uh, d7. You fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, probably open up with the enkedo here too. Intending knight g6, defending f4. Oh, case. Over there. So it's not a Fanchetto, it's gonna move, make two moves with the knight. That's kind of dangerous. Uh, you don't want to do, you don't want to make two movements uh, with the same piece on an opening. Uh, that kind of con uh, counteracts the principles of the opening. Then a knight g6 defending a 4 and then white has to demonstrate sufficient piece play to compensate for the sacrificed pawn. For examples of unintended games uh, and then there are more recommendations. So. Uh, there's also this. Oh no, there's that's what I did. That's not what the. So the main line accepted variation, e4, e5, f4, takes f4, accepted. Goes the knight, goes d5, he takes d5, and then bishop f6. Bishop e2 to make possible. Castle, uh, knight takes d5, getting back to pawn, d4, attacking the knight, and uh, on center, knight to e7, uh, planning to go to g6. White has two uh, more pieces, uh, one more piece in play than white has. And it is their move, so it is a very favorable position to fight. I would say. go d4, attacking the bishop, uh, the pawn. I go to g6, and now I can just follow the usual development of the pieces with uh, knight c3. Uh, let's say here something like bishop to b4. And in the night, uh, but even in this position, white has a lot of develop castles, castles. So I didn't like so much the accepted variation. Gotta say, not a lot of advantages for black um, as uh, development-wise. So we're gonna have to look at the declined variation. Oh no, this is also the accepted variation. Let's uh, take into account a different set. Movements. He takes e5, uh, knight f3. Black's most theoretical critical response is to try to hold onto the extra pawn with g5. Interesting. That's one, one move that I would uh, try and make. It's <laughs> Whenever I accept a game, but I try to hold onto the material and not just, you know, trade it in the future as uh, something that can be easily replaced with uh, development. Now, Black House has some aggressive intentions, most notably playing g5, g4, attacking on the queen si king side, preparing to deliver a disruptive queen check at h4, if uh, white's knight f3 moves. So, let's say uh, knight c3 advances, and it's gonna have to move now. Where's it move to? Not here, not here, definitely. Uh, either here or here. Here, it's gonna hinder the advance of the d4 pawn, which is not what white wants. Let's say knight to e5. And then. Very dangerous indeed. Not something you wanna experience as black, as white. Uh, I would suppose the only. Only. Here is g3, 
takes and you know can take back how does white prepare for that it doesn't because the next thing is the advance on g2 and that's just deadly nothing white can do about that so let's go back uh advance on g5 uh the bishop Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, bishop c4 looks to the most natural reply position. Pointing the bishop at the black's weak point in f7. Also, and there's this diagonal open too. Um, and preparing kingside castling. It also prepares to offer a dangerous peace sacrifice if black plays... Uh, if bla black plays g4. Right. Um... In case of knight to c3, oh, would also make g4. Now, uh, knight to e5, queen makes check, e3, f takes g. And again, uh, it's the same, the same uh, situation all over again. Any move that white does, it's a discover check right there. And that's not good for victory purposes. <laughs> Right, okay, so next one is g4 and castles. Now that is interesting and very dangerous for black. Um, I mean, what's the problem in taking this? Let's just say pawn takes. Bishop takes or queen takes? Um, I'm not really sure about that. I suppose bishop takes already takes the king off guard. Queen takes, preparing the deck over there. And later the diagonal of the bishop opens up. Both take control of the center. Uh, black has no pieces uh, in development. No pawns controlling the center. And that's just horrible. No castle. No protection whatsoever in front of the king. Not something one experiences black. So this is a very dangerous variation. I would say. What if you don't take the knight? What if you make another move? Probably protecting d5. Um, no pawns are any chance of being taken right now. So I would suppose the knight... Oh, but there's this advance, so take that back. Castles. Um, check. Developing bishop. Pawns is d4. Bishop b6. Now the knight actually survives. This is very dangerous. So the knight can survive. Because this thing is coming up. You have to take the knight. You gotta take the knight. That's the most uh, safe reply, I suppose. Okay, so that's for the king's uh, gambit accepted. Let's go for the king's gambit. Oh, come on! I want to study the king's gambit decline. <laughs> Goddamn, so this one doesn't have the king's gambit decline. We're gonna look at another guide uh, in a while. Just uh, bear with me. So e4, e5, f4, e6, e4, knight f3, e5. Nothing so... Uh, crazy. Bishop c4. g4. Castles. g takes f3. Queen takes f3. So the movement here is actually queen takes f3. 
not bishop takes. Moves your gambit. White's aim is to attack the f7 square. White has to play aggressively. There are four variations from here. So, black defends with the queen. Makes sense, but blocks the development of the knight. This king and... Wow, Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, the pieces on the black side are really not uh, that well positioned. To say it the least. Uh, development would be... Hang on. Yeah, queen f6, defending the f7 pawn. If bishop to c5 check, king to h1, queen f6. That's just a different variation. Uh, basically, follows up with knight c3, knight c6, knight e5, and now you see where the attack is going. I would suppose that the retreat would be queen to g7 while priming the advance of the d6 of the d7 to d6 pawn opening uh the diagonal and castling queen side because that would be the strategy so how do we as uh white oh there's this problem right here how do you deal with that? Either return the... No, you're not gonna return the queen. Go over there. And your bishop is completely fucked in that position. You do not wanna be black in this position. Right. So. Uh, another one is knight c6. Knight takes f4. And f6. Protected by the knight, of course. Queen takes f6, knight takes f6, and rook takes f6, gets the uh, sacrifice back. If knight f6, knight takes f4, e5. He takes d5. Hang on. What's the problem with this? Oh, it's attacking the bishop. Right, makes sense. Okay, so after queen f6, which is the most indicated move, e5, attacking the queen, of course, trying to misdirect her, and the queen has nothing to do but to take, takes f5, e5, now comes the move, bishop takes, so why does it come right now? Has to be aggressive. They're down material. Okay, bishop takes. What's the problem with king takes? Nothing. It's the main variation. <laughs> uh, what to do with white in this position? Nothing, just... Hmm. Takes back? Um, takes, takes, he has to go back and look at this, this is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Um, so, queen takes e5, bishop takes f7, king takes f7, 4. How is that the flattening of the queen? Perhaps by doing this, taking the black's defense over the fifth row. Okay. If okay, here's the the response to my last movement. E4. If queen takes f4, queen takes f4, four and e8. Um, I don't like to be black in this position. I really don't. <laughs> I mean, you can do this later on, but your king is not safe at all. So supposedly, this is supposed to be uh, favorable for black. In material, it is. But on, on, on the matter of the king's safety, I mean, anything that you do at this position, let's say 
Oh, for fuck's sake. King e8. Let's say you go for e4. Opening the diagonal of the bishop. Um, or let, let's be even more aggressive, right? Rook takes e8 and knight c3. Bringing up this uh, possibility. You want to deny that, so what do you do? Um, attacks the rook. If you try to check him, he will develop, which is not nice. Oh, he will develop anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, Sans. Looks favorable for a black, but you need computer defense to play. It's very hard to play. Yeah, I suppose the uh, plan for black here is to develop and uh, to bring this rook into play. Uh, but this side is quite hindered. I don't like that. I, I wouldn't like to be in, uh, in black's position right now. And, uh, you know, with an e4, you basically have all your pieces developed as white. And you can easily conjure up an attack uh, if black doesn't play exactly as, um, as theory goes, right? So, if I'm playing against an opponent that really knows his shit, I do not want to go for the advance on g4. Uh, me, personally. Right? Supposedly, advantageous for black, but not for me. <laughs> Uh, the advance would be d4, uh, queen takes d4, and uh, bishop e3. White oh, just likes to court danger. This thing uh, lurking in the background, though I suppose the advance, the retreat, would be most obvious. Not the attack. Gaining a tempo. Indeed. The tempo. So how's it going, sense? Everything okay? Okay, now, it only studies uh, the accepted version of the King's Gambit, but I don't want to go there. I want to go to the Klein version, which is way more fun. Uh, so we're going to go over to Wikipedia. Me, this thing here, right. Uh, let's go with the declined version. Where is the declined version? Okay, now I'm gonna have to make a few alterations here, bear with me, since uh, I'm gonna have to look at two screens at the same time. Doing good, good to know. Um, right, so have uh, this thing show up? Nope, sorry. Thing. And now we're gonna have to dimension this. This? The one comes up. Yeah. Everything looks nice. No, it doesn't. Hang on. Oh, it's in the same spot. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry about that. Now this. Uh, there we go. Okay. Right. Are you going to play the King's Gambit? I am actually going to uh, experiment with it. That's why the chess.com is uh, open there right now. I'm not going to uh, lose any rating by doing that with my Lee Chess account. Uh, so we're going to take a look into it. But I want to study the declined version, uh, which is my preferred um, version of the thing. Right. So let's go to the declined version. The Falkbeer Counter Gambit. Um, if I can bring this thing over here and uh, no. yeah. in the game, no, god damn it, where do you go for, hang on, just a sec. The good thing about Leech is it's so very intuitive that you can just move the pieces however you like. Okay, e4, e5, f4. Um, and now, let's go uh, with uh, Wikipedia's attack. Bokber counter gambit, d5. That's what I want to study, right? 
That's what I generally do in my uh, defense against the King's Gambit. The Falkbeer Counter Gambit is named after the 19th century Austrian master Ernst Falkbeer. It runs e4, e5, f4, d5, e takes d5, uh, e4. Now that's a move I'm gonna make. Uh, usually I take back with the queen. Is there that line? I don't suppose there is. <laughs> In which black sacrifices a pawn in return for quick and easy development, basically counteracting uh, the idea on white's part. Uh, it was once considered good for black and scored well, but white obtained some advantage with the response d3. These people have no love for their pawns, I have to say. They have no consideration for the uh, common life uh, of the proletariat. <laughs> Um, I suppose the only accept uh, the only acceptable answer here is taking, or just developing as best as possible. No, that's not good. Um, what would be? What do you think? What do you think, Sense? What would you do in this position? Um, I suppose. No, bishop to, to f5 makes sense because if it takes, takes, it has the development. Huh. Knight to f6. Also defends the pawn. Makes sense. Uh, basically the same idea then. Uh, though your idea clears up uh, one of the squares for the king to castle, which is, uh, I think, more useful. Knight to f6 would be quite interesting. Then, uh, white just wants to go for the grabs, I suppose. No! Has to take! Diagonal, the bishop is compromised, this bishop's compromised, this knight's compromised, gotta take. And then... You can support your bishop by going also attack the pawn. Yeah. Bishop to g5. Attacking the rook. The queen, sorry. Bishop over there. Maybe now this can follow up. Or even more development. Bishop over there. Preventing the check. Um if this thing advances, though, kind of a problem. Because if advances, where does knight go? I don't think it goes anywhere. First, take the bishop. Oh, yeah, takes the bishop, takes with the knight. Don't have to take with the queen. And then this is a silly knight. So bishop here, not a good move. Um, where are we right now? b2, so has to take. Oh, sorry. Has to take here first. Then, knight. And again, my god, three pawns in the center, though this is not solid. Uh, room to castle, knight is uh, developed, that's not great. Let's go back. Um, where were we right now? Uh, the knight to f6 was your suggestion, right? Uh, then take the pawn e4. Yeah, I suppose that's uh, the line that you're gonna follow. But white's position is a little bit more advanced than black. And the material is equal, I think, right now? No, white's actually ha has advantage in material. So, uh, I, I wouldn't be black in that position. Okay, what does uh, the book suggest? Uh, okay. The v3 attack. A more interpre uh, modern interpretation of uh, Falk Beer is d5. 2 d5. Okay, so 2 d5. He takes d5. Uh, and then c6. Priming the development of the knight. I suppose. 
What's the problem with queen takes? I want to see queen takes e5. <laughs> this is what I usually do. Uh, I've had good and bad results. Mostly bad, I have to say. But that's because I don't know how to play the opening. And I would really like to understand it. Uh, by Ninja Witch. Oh, Ninja Witch was a very good player. Right. As advocated by Aaron Ninja Witch, Black is not concerned about pawns and aims for early piece activity. What has better pawn structure and prospects uh, uh, of a better end game? The main line continues knight c3. Uh, of course, it does. E takes f4. E takes f4. Oh, this one. Now? Really? I suppose the next move is d4? 9f3. Huh. Take it uh, in a turn analysis to see. Yeah, uh, it's gonna suggest the same thing as the book goes, because it knows theory. <laughs> but hang on. I see three. Yeah, it takes. That's the best. The best response is but. Oh, you mean for the the the, the queen? Okay. Let's go back then. So e4. 5. 5. e takes d5. And then queen takes d5. Okay, so knight takes over here. What do you think goes next? Usually, I do the same movement I do with the Scandinavian attack. Right? That makes sense to me. So a knight there. Oh! Queen over here. Takes. Takes back. And white has the superior development. I suppose that's the point, right? Black. Advances. Yeah, but wh why subject yourself to all that movement with the queen? I, I get it, I get it. If you're moving with the queen all over the game, uh, in the beginning, it's really bad. So, uh, let's go further back. Play this. Knight develops. Knight develops. Pins the knight, makes sense. Oh, pins the other knight? This is a royal pin. This knight can't move, but this one can. Though, you know, would be advisable not to. Um, takes isolated double pawns. It's just terrible. Uh, takes takes the knight. Queen takes the knight. Oh my god. I can't take back. What about this? Why would you take back the pawn? Takes the pawn. Oh, it's check. It's check. <laughs> and the queen side castles. That's a fucking mad lad movement right there. That's that's just mad lad all the way. God damn. <laughs> um. Why not take this pawn? What's the problem with that pawn? Uh, okay. Kind of a complicated variation. We do not want to go into that right now. Uh, so let's just go back to the beginning. Um, no, that's not c6. What were we playing? d5. He takes d5. And then e4. Right? Uh, no, no, no. It's actually c6. c6 was the, the modern interpretation, right? Um, okay, the main line continues with knight c3. Let me take off the analysis so we don't get any cheats. Uh, knight c3. Where were we? e takes f4. Knight f3. Developing. And... Bishop d6. I 
make sense. Still waiting for the take to develop the knight with the tempo. Um, what would you do in this position, Sen? As white. Probably develop the bishop. Bishop to c4. If takes, takes. Um, or even d4. Oh, sorry. I played it. Shouldn't have played it. Getting the control of the center. And then it... Black. Is almost forced to take this back. Uh, not to have the center completely controlled by it. You would resign. Come on, dude. For fuck's sake, it's the opening. Both sides are quite uh, balanced. See this? Look at that. D4. My suggestion. Right. So, D4. Plays D4. Uh, and let's see if that is what the book suggests. Yeah. Bishop D6. D4. 97. Uh, let's take this off. Now this pawn's uh, being threatened. For two pieces, I suppose now you take. Let's see if I was right. Yeah, D takes C6. Knight takes C6. Um, Black has three pieces developed, while White has only two. And there's this guy right here, bugging them off. I suppose the next move would be uh, Bishop to. What would you do? You would play D4, D3. Uh, in the previous position. Yeah, if you play d3, not a good move, dude. You uh, hamper the diagonal of your bishop, and you don't take such an active role. Uh, the, the d4 here is quite important at this moment. What would you do in this position as white? My thoughts are on bishop 5, during the knight and the king, uh, and also providing the time to, to castle. But you can also go hmm what can you also do you know I wouldn't be wouldn't like to be uh, white in this position but at the same time um, I'm, I'm not sure if I have the master uh, the mastery of conducting uh, black's position to this one uh, I would pin and push the pawn. No, because pushing the pawn gains a tempo. Does it really? Attacks, attacks, and then you have two pieces attacking your pawn. So you do have this. Defend it. And you can just push this thing. Okay, okay, that's considerable. Let's see. Pushes? Where do you go with the knight? Or here, maybe. Okay, let's see what the book suggests. So after knight f6, c6, sorry, knight c6, giving positions analogous to the modern variation of the gambit accepted. Oh, so this uh, actually transposes into the accepted gambit. Curious and dangerous at the same time. Uh, Queen e2 doesn't look bad. Jesus, dude, I mean. What is this bishop right here? That's... Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that, to be honest. Uh, but that's as far as the analysis goes, right? But this is the Falkbeer counter gamut. Um, I, I very much like uh, black Black's position right here. Uh, and I would like to be in this position, so... Pretty good move with d5. So we don't take with the queen. Now we see it. Um, okay, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, f4 Yeah, the next one is bishop c5 Now uh, The classical defense a common way to decline the gambit is with bishop c5 the classical uh, King's gambit de uh, declined the bishop prevents white from castling and is such a nuisance that white often expends two tempi to eliminate it by means of knight c3 a4 <laughs> to exchange on c5 or b6 Oh, sorry 
or b6, after which a uh, white may castle without worry. It also contains an opening trap for novices. Ooh, okay. If white continues with f takes e5, right? Um, I wouldn't play it. I was thinking with the knight. You said q, that's queen, isn't it? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, if f takes e5, two uh, question marks. <laughs> right, where is it? Hang on. I have to. Right here. Black continues, queen h4 check. Yeah, that's horrific. Don't do that. So, white's not gonna take. Um, okay. Which uh, either uh, the rook is lost or white is checkmated. <laughs> I think the uh, losing the rook is uh, a little bit better than uh, losing the game. This line often comes about by transposition from lines uh, of the Vienna game or bishop's opening when white plays f2, f4. O, f2. Oh, the, on the Vienna opening. Right, yeah, the Vienna game. One rarely seen uh, is the Rottweiler counter gambit. Three, knight f3. It's not that rare. I think I've played this one in Lee chess two or three times. Uh, you pointed out the bishop movement being bad. The queen had a pin uh, with the knight and the king. Yeah, uh, indeed. And uh, with the idea of the king's gambit, what you want to do is to go for development as fast as you can, which is uh, quite <laughs> a challenge if you're uh, doing that, if you're blocking your own pieces. You have to be careful about that. Okay. Right. So, bishop prevents white. Da, 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 da. Knight f3. Now, what would be the uh, follow up? d6, support and pawn. Uh, also, a move that I probably made at a given point, and I suppose now you take. Oh no, you don't take yet. Oh yeah, you take because uh, the queen is protecting the checking square. Dude, this diagonal. Ah, Jesus, dude, this is so dangerous. I had to be careful about that. Um, okay. I always uh, get confused. D six. 9f3, d6, and b4. This reminds me, this has so much uh, Evans Gambit uh, feelings. Bishop takes d3, bishop goes back, advances. And then you have a massive, massive center of white spawn. Um, right, so c6, c4, b4. Confusion is taking over my brain. The idea of the gambit is similar to that scene in the Evans game. I didn't even read it! <laughs> in the Italian game, White sacrifices a pawn to try and build a strong center with bishop takes b4, c3, bishop c5, or bishop a5, uh, f takes... Oh, f takes c5. So, if bishop... Uh, no, bishop takes first. Five. E takes C five. E take uh, F takes C five. What's the danger here? How would you respond as black? Hmm. You can't advance the knight over here. And put it over here. And since you've accepted the gambit, um, material is the same right now. You don't have to worry about that. Hmm. Maybe knight? Or to c6. Hang on, what happened with the soundtrack? Oh, we reached the end. There we go.
take the pawn since they can't take back. Um, oh, they can't take back because uh, of the same trap, right? That's a good idea. Um, okay, so let's see how the book goes. Dun, 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 dun. F takes c5, d takes c5, indeed. Um, and then d4 comes with the center domination. However, this line is considered as lightly dubious. <laughs> huh. Okay. Let's go as fast uh, as far as it goes. So, d4, you either take or you remove the bishop from the game. If you don't take, they can't take. But it can advance, which is dangerous. Then again, again, you can't advance because the bishop cuts off the king's line of, uh, of castling. You're doing all the good moves here, sir. <laughs> well thought. Okay, so advances to d4. What would I do? Read the bishop to d6 is an idea. Uh, pin the knight is another idea. Hmm. About the knight. Obviously, after we take care of the threat, so it's either take or move. Let's uh, analyze each uh, and every single uh, one of those options. Right. Oh, sorry. Not that one. <laughs> Not that one. The bar significantly increased there. Uh, let's say takes. If takes, takes solid center and uh, oh trying to trap the black bishop what okay develops what happens with this Take, don't you? Takes. He takes. And then it's a free pawn. Because uh, lost knight. Okay. So a5 is not a good option. Um, okay. Next one is that to make the exact same thing. Knight. Takes the bishop. King checks, bishop checks, and defense thing. Here comes a check, then, um, yeah, and I would prefer to be black in this position since you're like, why it's all over the place? Let's see how it goes. Bishop, defense, retreats. Yeah, I would rather prefer to be black in this position, so... In case uh, they go with the classical defense, I suppose taking the pawn is a very good idea. Okay, so let's just remind uh, what is the classical defense. Classical defense goes uh, e4, 5, e4, bishop c5. Then we have um sorry about that. We're not gonna go for the trap. Knight F three E six E four a B three four a C three. Takes. 
then. Takes, takes, can't take back. Nine to a three. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, that's the tempi. That's the tempi that White loses. That is mentioned right here. To recapture the spawn, or at least to remove the bishop from the position of uh, blocking the blocking the castle. Okay. Uh, other second moves for black. Let's see that one. Uh, back to the beginning. 45 4. Other options in the king uh, gambits declined are possible though unusual, such as the Adelaide counter gambit. Knight c6. Knight f3. Uh, f5. That's a map lab movement. Okay. Advocated by 20 miles. Uh, 2 d6. Oh, right, so it doesn't go into further detail about this one. 2 f5, uh, hang on, is among the oldest counter gambits uh, in King Gam King's, King's Gambit Decline. Uh, no from a game published in 1625 by uh, Giochino Greco. Vincent uh, R how do you read that name? Ruby. Ruby. Also played it again in Michael Chigorin in 1882. Nonetheless, considered dubious because e takes e5, f5, uh, with the threat of queen h5 check. Yeah, gives white a good game. I would not open myself to that kind of a kind of check. That's not nice. No mind line of defense. Um, other movements follow us and f6 and f3 and now e6 definitely have played this thing uh, when after knight f3 vast uh, is e takes f4 exposing the fissure defense the 2d6 invites white to play d4 instead curious and 2 knight, uh, knight f6 f Five. Uh, knight takes e5. Knight f stop suggesting me moves. Uh, knight f3. No, wait. Knight f3 wasn't here? Oh, I, think, I, I suppose it's talking about a different sense. Um, okay. Let's try uh, and go into a match uh, and play the King's Gambit now. Okay, shall we? So let me just fix this up. <laughs> back. One goes back. Those. Yeah. We're back. Uh, let's go to play. Five minutes. And uh, can we select a color? Custom game. Standard. Versus a random, yeah? Play. Okay, we actually got uh, the whites. So let's see how this one goes. So far, so good. D6. That's the movement that was talking about. Um, I would push E4 right here. Defends the knight in order for me not to be able to defend this thing. Um, Gonna advance. Pressure's the knight. The only defense is this right now. So far, so good. Very good center. Pieces are defended. This 
spawned as a threat, so... Uh, is threatened. Let me just cast, so he's gonna have to take the knight. And I do have superior movement. Um, sorry, superior development. Develops the queen. Okay. What if I force him to make a decision? Or support the knight. That's also fine. The knight and the pawn. Castle's queen side. Oh, he's going for the king side attack. Ironically, as the game suggested. Hmm. But you know what? I'm kind of tired of this. Oh, oh, oh! That is check, and I lost the pawn. Bad. Didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that this pawn would be exposed, rather. Now, we got big problems. <laughs> yeah, I'm down a pawn. This one for free. Yeah. Goes for the king side attack. This. His key queen out of here. And I should go for my own attack. Threatening checkmate. Did he respond to that? He advances. Take. What happens with take? He can take the knight all he wants. It's gonna be a discover check. A discover check. Mate! There we go! <laughs> nice! I didn't see that one coming. Uh, right. So our rating right now is very low. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, probably, uh, me, uh, probably means that we're not gonna get that many strong players to play against us. Uh, but let's go into analysis right now. Uh, what was my accuracy? <laughs> okay. Uh, e4 is a book move. King's Gambit decline, Queen's Knight defense. With the Knight f3. That's opening. Okay. Indeed. What would be the most appropriate uh, responses here? So we got e uh, f5, uh, counter Gambit, uh, as proposed by Wikipedia. Um, you've got d6. So. As I see it, the, pro um, the proportion of advantage is this for white, this for tie, and this for black, right? Is that right? Because it is. Okay, so 
with that five. It's gonna climb up and up and up and up. Okay. Anyhow, uh, this is the analysis. Four, four, six, all variation here. Now, E, I chose to go for Not bad move. Push up towards the knight. Best move, best move. Good move. What's recommended to do in this position? Your lines. I'm not uh, familiar with chance.com, that's why I'm uh, not being able to... <laughs> Does the computer um, recommend the move? How, how, do I, how do I show that? D4. I played this. What's the intended move? Or do I have to be premium to, to have that thing? Anyhow, played bishop e2, not a bad move. Oh, here it is. Queen d3. Developing a piece, uh, though not a bishop. And in the knight, and uh, I'm not sure um, what else is different there. Say, queen d3. What does it do now? What would black do? Suppose this is the threat. Later on, in on right there, in like that. Um, not sure about that. So let's go back to the match. Right. It should be two. And he played knight takes two. Good move. Uh, the best one would be bishop take. And I wonder what that is, why that is. I would take with the bishop, definitely. Um, takes, best move. Knight f6, good move. Move, move, bro, doing great. Knight f3, c3, would be uh, better. Huh, do I have that in mind? Five check, twenty three. Uh, this should be three. Good move. Uh, best move in my opinion. My opinion. Uh, this was a question mark, and I probably failed to take advantage of it. Uh, queen d six is a mistake, cause queen b five check. Uh, then, uh, ninety seven. Bishop takes c five. Motherfucker! How the hell didn't I see that one? <laughs> oh, I was so such an idiot. Oh, it, it was it was fast chess. How can you say? Bishop d6 is best. Okay, doubles the pressure on the black bishop and uh, gains a piece. And I went for it. <laughs> DD2. God damn it. Uh, castles inside. Uh, H3, best move. H5. Again, is a mistake. H takes the 4. Uh, H takes G4. Knight C4. Threatening the queen. Uh, queen F8. Goes back to the place where he started. Uh, knight g5. Put knight g5. 7. And. Interesting attack, I have to say. Opening the file for attacks in the 
King. Uh, then it goes. Jesus Christ. I lost. I, I completely lost right now. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, that was the mistake. That was the mistake. So it's move 12, h5. Move 12, h5. Um, this is the mistake. takes four 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 eight e6 nine takes six why is that a mistake because oh yeah, because of that. And then there's this. Okay, makes sense. Let's go back to the move. Um, Bishop takes c5. That's what I played. <laughs> also a mistake. Queen takes c5. Which he did. One. Fast, and that's why I lost the pawn. Right? Uh, bishop, a uh, queen b8, a uh, king b8 is bad. And another, goddamn, <laughs> another inaccuracy. Takes another mistake. Wonder uh, if I play over here, it just go there. Oh no, I'm threatening this uh, capture. Close. Okay, so B2, uh, Queen B2, inaccuracy. Sacrificing the knight was an inaccuracy. Huh. What happens with. Seven. Six. See what he should have made. Right? Where are we right now? He takes e six. So go there. Right in that. He takes b seven. Check. Takes b seven. Uh, checks. In checks. Eight. Seven. Oh, it was a, it was a, a draw. That's why it was an inaccuracy. The only hope I had was an infinite check uh, draw. Unfortunately. So let's go over to another match. <clears throat> Uh, 
No, 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 no. What the hell? Yeah. You have five minutes. Now we're black. Please. King spawn. Good chance? Good chance it will be? Nah, no, it won't. Okay. time forcing to make a decision okay doesn't want to make a decision so I'll make one for him Come on. Leave my bishop alone. Oh. I don't suppose that's good for you, mate. Take it. If I take and move the bishop out of the way, but he's gonna. Uh, that's very dangerous. Oh, it's not. I can take this. Come out with a check. Now I can just defend this thing. <laughs> choice
Jesus Christ! I forgot about that. This cure. to know about my queen what's that supposed to accomplish Okay, uh, let's go for a new five minute and see if we can play another King's Gambit. Yes, we can! <laughs> let's go with that one, boys. In tempo. Lost tempo. Um. Have to get rid of that bishop, right? Side attack is primed, boys. Just lost a piece, dude. You gotta play better than that. All the way. Thank you. Right. Next one. That's a rematch. Let's see what kind of. Oh, King spawn. Uh, Queen spawn. 
Rather. What is this? Oh, he was prepared for that one. He was fucking prepared. <laughs> okay, okay, that's uh, reasonable. Very reasonable. Uh, but first... Yeah, let's do that. I don't think that's a good position for you, Mike. everyone to the party as I could uh, way more advanced than 1460 but what can I do okay dude wants to knock me over there Probably push that way. Oh. I have to do something with this bishop there. <laughs> Besides the trade and uh, resigned. Okay. Go for a new five minutes. New Fiverr. Huh? Oh, come on, I'm playing the blacks again? Come on, give me a gambit. Ah, he didn't give me a gambit! Bones to the center. Seriously? 
Who are you? What's the idea now, my friend? I don't think you have any, do you? X back with the knight. Oh, that wasn't a good move. Sorry, sir. Your options are quite limited. trouble with taking the book out I don't think there is it's gonna do it check let's say oh there's fuck I didn't even see that one coming <laughs> okay let's just cancel I simply didn't see that one coming. How do you defend against that? Change? Favorable for me? At least they think it is. Yeah. I'm up a piece. Oh my god, how the hell didn't I see that one? Jesus fucking Christ, are you fucking idiot? I don't know what is it with this thing, but... I just didn't see it. Well, that's embarrassing. What the hell did I even do that for? I don't think this dude understands things. This. You gotta move the rook. 
Oh, he's lost now. I mean, come on. Basic end game. Fucking way, gonna let you crown now. Come on. Let's go on your fiver. Why am I always the black one? How do we quit? New game. Bye. Auto aboard in 10 seconds. There we go. See if we can go with the King's Gambit. Ah, no, we can't. Now maybe we can transpose into it. Though I don't think we will. <laughs> so let's just go full control of the center. Guess that's the idea. The dude is just playing his own thing, and I respect that. I respect that. There might be a way we can punish him for that. I don't think I played. That was not a good move. Not at all. Oh, that was not a good move. Knight or bishop? Bishop. I can't complain about that move. Given what he played. Them. You know what? I'm gonna cast a queen side. Oh, you played so wrong. So wrong. up a point form but a point oh my god not a lot to do in this position to be honest
I think there was a checkmate. He just lost the checkmate. Um... Oh, no, you won't. Seriously? Be able to you get a stalemate or just resign. Hey, okay. let's go for a new five. If we can play the kings game. Oh. oh, come on. I like that structure. I'm usually on my side. <laughs> Pressure it. good. Not for him. This thing here. Oh. She's about to take. I don't do anything about that.
Freddy gonna do against him, mate? comes next. Seriously? Let's see you escape. There's nothing. Nothing at all. Perhaps I can try and push this one. Push here. Try to exchange. Gotta defend it. Here we go. Here for a new fiver. And I think we're gonna cut short the stream after that. Any possibility of a Queen's Gambit? King's Gambit? No! Let's go for a Rue Lopez. Or this thing. That also works.
wouldn't have thought of it. Bishop. Doubling up. Can't do that. Oh yeah. At least. see the problem now. It is quite a big problem. <laughs> this pawn can't move. I gotta take this thing. Oh, he saw that. He saw that. I just hope I have enough space to attack. <laughs> that also works. Does it just take it? No, thank you. X. Gotta take with the rook. <clears throat> two pawns? Yeah, two pawns.
Wait a second. I know that strategy. I want to simplify. More advantageous for me. Now you gotta take it. Or that, that also works. Okay, I'll do that then. The tempo. Two pawns and a broken king endgame. Just a matter of time. Gotta advance on the other side. Now I should probably this thing. Oh no. I didn't do that. Tell me I haven't done that. Yeah, he's one. He's one. Because I was an idiot. Oh, come on. <laughs> idiot move. Oh, he's gone five seconds. That's rather nice. And I'm gonna lose. Probably not, I think. Wrong. Lost on time. <laughs> Go after my pawns, mate. That's the only thing you gotta do. Anyhow, with this uh, incongruent match, uh, we're gonna put the stream to an end. So since uh, you're still there, uh, thanks for showing up. And uh, I think uh, we're gonna keep studying during the Sundays. So first subject was the King's Gambit. Uh, we're gonna experiment uh, with it uh, a little bit more and see how we go. Uh, usually playing on chess.com and uh, usual matches of three minutes will be on Lee Chess. Uh, easy win, not even close. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Uh, I missed your sound alert at that moment when I lost my rook. So anyhow, uh, thank you uh, for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one.